Hi everyone, I'm John Baker from the Met Office. The future of the AMOP is one of the big uncertainties in climate science. We expect it to weaken, but how much and whether it may even collapse remains uncertain. Some studies suggest the AMOC could be approaching a tipping point leading to a collapse, but our study tells a different story, one of a more resilient AMOC, yet with significant risks of weakening. We ask what mechanisms prevent a complete AMOC shutdown in CMIP6 models, even under extreme climate change, do overturning changes outside the Atlantic affect the AMOC's response, and ultimately, what is the AMOC's future? Here, Broker shows the AMOC's deep waters forming in the North Atlantic and upwelling diffusively elsewhere. More recently, westerly winds over the Southern Ocean were also found to drive this upwelling. This sketch shows the present day upwelling pathways. At the bottom is the Atlantic and at the top is the Indo-Pacific connected by the Southern Ocean. There are three upwelling pathways of the AMOC deep waters. The Atlantic upwelling pathway upwells and returns these waters in the Atlantic. The Southern Ocean upwelling pathway upwells these waters in the Southern Ocean, driven by strong westerly winds, and the Indo-Pacific residual upwelling pathway upwells the remaining deep waters of the AMOC diffusively in the Indo-Pacific and returns them directly to the Atlantic via Southern Ocean zone currents. And together, these upwelling pathways balance the AMOC's deep water formation to satisfy incompressibility in the ocean. To quantify these pathways, we use the overturning stream function shown here in the Atlantic on the left, the Indo-Pacific on the right, and globally averaged in the Southern Ocean. The orange shaded stream function shows the AMOC's clockwise circulation, whereas the Indo-Pacific has an anti-clockwise overturning. Our method is based on continuity of volume in the ocean. What goes down must come up and vice versa. In the present day, the AMOC Southern Ocean upwelling pathway roughly equals the Southern Ocean upper cell strength at 34 South. But under extreme climate forcing, we find a new Pacific overturn in circulation or PMOC emerges. And since it also upwells in the Southern Ocean, the AMOC shear of the Southern Ocean upwelling becomes smaller than the Southern Ocean upper cell at 34 South. Here's a handful of the CMIP6 models. On, this is the pre-industrial control. There's a strong AMOC on the left and an anti-clockwise Indo-Pacific overturning on the right. After an abrupt quadrupling of carbon dioxide or 0.3 sphere drop North Atlantic freshwater forcing, the AMOC weakens and a clockwise PMOC emerges in the Indo-Pacific. And this is the future state 90 years after the forcing begins. Here at the top is the four times CO2 experiment and at the bottom is the Hosen experiment. The future PMOC strength on the left varies widely across the models. On the right, the Southern Ocean upper cell at 34 South strengthens under CO2 forcing, but weakens slightly under hosing. Here is the AMOC and its upwelling pathways response to four times CO2 forcing. The AMOC on the left weakens in all the models, but there's a wide spread. Just three of the 34 models weaken below five sphere drops after 90 years, and none shut down completely. The Atlantic and the Indo-Pacific residual upwelling pathways shut down in most models, leaving only the Southern Ocean upwelling pathway. Since the AMOC strength is equal to the sum of these upwelling pathways, the future AMOC is almost is sustained by wind-driven Southern Ocean upwelling. Without it, the AMOC would probably completely collapse. Here on the left, the future AMOC strength is directly proportional to the future Southern Ocean upwelling pathway because it's the only pathway left, except in these four outlying models. On the right, by contrast, the Southern Ocean upwelling pathway in the control doesn't explain the future AMOC strength because changes in this pathway vary across models. To explore this, we split models into those with stronger or weaker future AMOCs than you'd expect based on their control Southern Ocean upwelling pathways. Now here's a key result. Changes in the AMOC Southern Ocean upwelling pathway are strongly related to the future PMOC strength. A stronger PMOC causes a greater decrease in this pathway 
because both upwell in the sub and ocean and the PMOC competes for this upwelling, weakening the AMOC. On the right, when we subtract the future PMOC strength from the change in sub and ocean upper cell strength, the relationship gets even stronger. So the future AMOC strength is strongly correlated with the future sub and ocean upper cell strength at 34 south minus the future PMOC strength. In other words, it depends on the control strength of sub and ocean upwelling how this changes and how strong the future PMOC becomes. Since Southern Ocean winds strengthen under warming, a complete AMOC collapse would require a very strong PMOC, stronger than we see in these models. Since Southern Ocean upwelling must be balanced by downwelling in either the Atlantic or the Indo-Pacific. Here's a comparison of two models showing the cumulative contribution of each upwelling pathway to the AMOC strength. In both, the future AMOC is almost entirely sustained by the Southern Ocean upwelling pathway shown in orange. But in the right hand model, a stronger PMOC shown by the black dash line weakens the AMOC Southern Ocean upwelling pathway more, leading to a weaker AMOC shown by the purple dash line. So what does this mean for the future of the AMOC? Under a high end realistic scenario, SSP 585 on the right, the AMOC weakens up by 45% on average by 2100, with a minimum strength around seven sphere drips, so above a collapsed state. And crucially, it's sustained by wind-driven Southern Ocean upwelling. Our findings suggest this 21st century AMOC stability in CMIT models is due to robust physical processes. So we argue the AMOC is unlikely to collapse this century in line with the IPCC because Southern Ocean winds are projected to strengthen and the PMOC that's generally weak or absent under realistic scenarios is unlikely to be strong enough to balance most of the Southern Ocean upwelling and by a collapse here we mean a weakening to below six sphere drops. We still need to understand what limits the PMOC strength and improve observations and modelling of the Indo-Pacific and Southern Ocean overturnings. An Indo-Pacific observing array is on my wish list. A PMOC would have impacts on climate and ecosystems, so there's a lot to understand, and our findings may also help explain past AMOC changes when a PMOC may have existed. So, it, to conclude, even under extreme climate forcings, wind driven Southern Ocean upwelling sustains a weakened AMOC, and a collapse is unlikely this century because a strong PMOC would be needed to balance the Southern Ocean upwelling. Our study published in Nature is all about balance, both in the overturning vertical transports and in rebalancing the public and scientific debate around the AMOC's future. Thank you for listening.